And today we're going to have a special report about Monsanto in Fort McClellan, Alabama. From 1935 to 1999, when Fort McClellan was open, hundreds of thousands of our troops got poisoned and radiated by Monsanto. And today we're going to interview several people that are going to give their testimony of what happened at Fort McClellan. Hi, my name's Sal Caiozo. I served at Fort McClellan, Alabama in 1981 for basic training as well as AIT for military police training. Uh, I am currently spearheading in Rhode Island the, um, the fact of HR 411, which is a Health Registry Act, which is in Congress and has been in Congress three prior times and never made it. Hi, my name's Dennis Trembley. I served with the uh, 43rd Military Police Brigade, 119th MP Company. Um, I was stationed in Fort McClellan, Alabama for uh, United States Army Military Police Training. Uh, 95 Bravo was the uh, MOS. Well, I guess in the 1960s, 1970, Monsanto had a, a factory on the outside gate, one of the gates. And uh, basically what had happened was they had PCB leaks that polluted the whole area. Now, we all know PCBs stay in the ground. They just don't go away. Uh, as far as radiation, there was a lot of testing done at Pelham Range with depleted uranium. Um, depleted uranium is a funny thing because it is alpha particles. However, when it does get hot, it turns into an aerosol and you breathe it in. Alpha particles become very dangerous to you then. Uh, other things as well were PCBs in the water, as well as TCEs. And at one of the, at the MP training site, there was ionizing radiation found, which was cobalt and plutonium. How I found this out was I was actually Googling, uh, I was trying to look up old pictures of the post and show my kids about, I wanted to see what, what kind of advancements in training and, and so on and so forth. Uh, I was very unaware. I, I did not know about the toxic exposure, the contamination. When I basically turned 40, I started to really feel different and started to get sick. Uh, I have intestinal issues, which the doctors gave a name of it as IBS, basically because they don't know what's wrong. I suffer from chronic joint pain. Um, I've had my gallbladder removed when I was 28 years old, uh, kind of young to have that removed. Uh, a number of other things too, um, I ended up with fibromyalgia and the doctors can't explain that either. I mean, it's every time I go to a doctor, they just scratch their head. I mean, I, I'm a type, type 2 diabetic, uh, thyroid problems, hypertension, I've had polyps removed out of my stomach uh, two, on two separate occasions. I, I have a difficult time sometimes breathing. Uh, my stomach gets rock hard and my chest feels like I have an elephant sitting on it. They once brought me into the hospital by ambulance. They kept me in the hospital to do a cardiac workup. Heart's fine. Everything mimicked a heart attack. Heart's fine. I've been sick and actually went to uh, Kent County Hospital back just a few years ago and I actually had the head of the ER department tell me that my body was septic and toxic and they did not know what was making me sick. My son at six years old ended up with a Ewing sarcoma uh, to the jaw. It's a type of bone cancer. It's a very rare bone cancer on short bones. Usually you get it on the long bones like the ulna, the fibula, these type of things. Um, the doctors at Mass General, because that's where I brought him, actually said that it was very rare for a child to have that type of cancer in the jaw. Fortunately, we saved him. He's 24 years old now, but however, he still needs to go through all sorts of surgeries and everything else. I mean, it's been very taxing on the family. And of course, when I got sick, I lost everything. There was nowhere I could go and say, hey, I'm having a problem. It's, they don't care. I, I, the only thing I can say is just absolute, complete betrayal. Like, betrayal, depression, um, you know what I mean? F finding, I, I, I'm still in the process of finding stuff out. Like this story is so deep that it's, I, I mean, just Google, Google Fort McClellan toxic exposure and get in touch with us on the Facebook groups and 
everything is right there for you to see. H.R. 411 is a bill by, brought out by uh, Congressman Tonko in the Albany District of New York State. Um, this bill basically is a health registry act. It's basically to notify all the veterans that serve there and to let them know, you know, hey, we, we have a health registry. What's wrong with you? What's going on? What's not going on? It's gone through three other sessions of Congress with different numbers. Another one, I believe, was 2036, the last one. It never goes through. In fact, H.R. 1960, the beloved NDAA Act that just got voted on this past Friday, Congressman Tonko tried to put an amendment, Amendment 83, which was to the Secretary of the Army to notify everyone that was stationed at Fort McClellan about what's going on, about the possibilities, as they wrote, of contamination there. According to Tonko's office this morning, which I called them because I am a, a Rhode Island lobbyist, um, and they did talk to me, they struck it. They didn't even want to hear it. VA covers absolutely 100% nothing. They deny everything. Uh, it's up to you to prove your own case, so to speak. Yep. And I mean, we, there's EPA reports. There's, you know, Radiological Society reports. There, there's anything you need. You you can Google and you can see actual yeah. report, factual reports. This isn't just hearsay. I found out because I saw an article in Law Enforcement Today last year. I was going through my whole life saying, well, just what's wrong with me? And you said there's EPA reports on this too? There's right? also EPA reports. There's also ADEM reports, which is the Alabama Department of Environmental Management reports. There are also private company links that they had people go in. There's also one report from 1966 that a biologist went there, put bluegill fishes in one of the streams. And within three minutes, their eyes popped out, they were dead, their, their skin came off as they were boiled. One thing I want everybody to understand is that, like, there was, you know, in World War II, there was over 500,000 people that went through this base. That's just World War II. That ain't any other conflict. I mean, the, the vast majority, you know, a lot of these people could be, could be dead right now. There's still stuff there. It's leaching out of the ground. People got sick. And lest us not forget that Monsanto paid the town of Anniston, or the city of Anniston, $700 million, to which not one veteran, not one veteran was informed. We were kept out of it thinking that the United States government would take their responsibility, and at the end of the day, we see that they're going to be childish. When I went, I went in uh, November of 96 till May of 97, and they knew about it back then. The EPA reports will show that. You can Google it. They knew when I went in 96. They were already scheduled for, uh, you know, everything that was to come up. So I thought it was just maybe the U.S. Army chemical soldiers that this, was, this affected, but it affected anybody and everybody from 1935 to 1999. If you served any amount of time at this base whatsoever and, and you're experiencing any health problems whatsoever, you need to go and get checked out and you need to file a claim for toxic exposure. Their best bet would be to go to poisonveterans.org. Um, that would be a good place to start. They can turn around and they can communicate to me. I'm actually the one who started this thing. Um, that would be the first place. The second place, there are Facebook pages and stuff like that, Facebook groups that people can join that were there to, uh, you know, to talk to everyone else to see, you know, get everybody else's handle on this. Um, and the only other thing I can think of is just get in touch with their congressman and stop banging on doors and do whatever. I mean, if we don't do this, we're screwed. You know, fr from here, it's going to, you know, I, I've been told it's only going to get worse, and I, I'm seeing it's getting worse, but I ain't going to stop. I'm, uh, I'm going to follow Sal to hell, if need be, to get this resolution passed for everybody that this has affected. Well, from here, my plans are to get a lot of other people involved in their own states so they can get the same resolutions done from their own states 
and send them to Washington. At least that way Washington knows at the state levels know, because you know as well as I do, if Washington does nothing, this is going to be kept on the state levels, and people are going to be on a state dime for insurance, welfare, or what have you, because a lot of us are sick. And the, the government needs to take responsibility. Please get this message across the American people that we're, we're sick, we're dying, we were poisoned against our will, using, used as human lab rats, and, you know, this is completely unfair. We were betrayed. I mean, you know, we, we, any one of us, and I can speak for, for a multitude of veterans, any one of us would have laid down our life f for the greatness of this country and for the freedoms that it provides. And, you know, please just don't forget us. I love my country. I love its people. I fear my government. I have no trust in my government. I believe that this whole thing is a facade. You know, something phony to keep people happy and that's it, but when push come to shove, forget it. They're gonna put you under the rug. You just witnessed disturbing testimonies from actual soldiers who served and trained, or should I say victims, at Fort McClellan, Alabama. And it's very disturbing to know that you put your heart and soul to go serve your country proudly, but later to learn that your enemies are not just foreign and domestic, but through your own government. These guys have been heavily toxified, no compensation, no help, nor no knowledge from our own government. And what we could do as people, as civilians, as fellow soldiers, is to help H.R. 411 pass, push this bill through, and get these soldiers the compensation and recognition that they rightfully deserve.